So I think there's a lot to be said for the quality of what Tom Steyer is doing and uh, the quality of the people working on his campaign. Um, the problem is, is that Tom Steyer really still does suck. And if you drive around, you see those billboards for Tom Steyer, I get really irritated and frustrated at them. And one of the reasons is probably because I, I'm a Bernie Sanders supporter, and I see that as potentially a competitor of Bernie Sanders and maybe drawing from some of the communities that Bernie would do well with. Um, but I think there's also, I mean, real deep issues there that are worth understanding and even acknowledging the difference between Tom Steyer and Michael Bloomberg in the ways that Tom Steyer is good, he still sucks, so there's still a lot of problems that I think we couldn't overlook. Um, so uh, one of the issues is that he's a billionaire who's self-funding his campaign. So there's the obvious reasons, which is we should not have a political system which basically says, well, you become a serious candidate somehow if you have a lot of money, and you're not a serious candidate if you don't have money. Because there's a lot of, this is a thing that Bernie's pointed out in the past, there's a lot of smart people out there that don't have a lot of money, and there are a lot of dumb people that do have money. And it's stupid that we should just be able to give access to billionaires to be able to be viable presidential candidates. But to flesh that out a little bit more, Tom Steyer is not really soliciting donations. He's been doing these kinds of like, please donate one dollar to my campaign so I can make it to the debate stage, you know. So he's done that, but he's not really getting donations because he's self-funding the campaign. Now you might think, well, that's good because he's saving people money or whatever. That he's like providing resources that don't have to be drawn from the working class the way that Bernie raises his money. But the, one of the issues there is, like in the last quarter fundraising, this is the uh, quarter four of 2019, Bernie Sanders reported this huge haul of almost 35 million uh, contributions, which is way more than the next leading person, which I think was Buttigieg at like 24.5 or something like that. It's like 10 million more than the next leading person, way more than he raised in the last quarter, and they're all from small dollar, you know, uh, like $18, $14, whatever, from working class people, and you can, you can see the number of donations, the number of donors is extremely high, low dollars, and from working class professionals like teachers, people that work at Walmart or Target or whatever. Um, so that's that's useful. That's helpful information because when you look at Bernie Sanders and you look at his campaign and you're assessing that campaign, you can say, well, it's very interesting that he has this deep well of support from poor working class people who believe in his vision and believe in it so strongly that they're willing to donate their money, which they don't have a lot of, because they believe in him and they want to support his campaign. You could say somewhat similar things about Warren, of course not as good as Bernie on that point, and you can look at Pete Buttigieg, you can look at Joe Biden and say, oh, well, they have got these uh, bundler fundraisers that are getting $2,800 max donations from the extremely wealthy people in the wine cave or whatever, right? So you can contrast Buttigieg's you know, the way he goes about things and the type of people that support him. They're the wine cave billionaires that want to keep the status quo. And Bernie Sanders, on the other hand, he's got the working class progressive and a very wide and deep base of support from across the entire country. That's helpful. Right? If you're making your decisions of who to vote for in the primary, that's helpful information. None of that information exists for Tom Steyer or it does in a meaningless quantity because he's self-funding. But we have no idea how much people actually care about him or, you know, how deep their support is or if they'd be willing to, you know, volunteer their time and energy and get other people involved. Like, that just doesn't, that's not, so we're deprived of that information by the fact that he's a billionaire self-funding his campaign. Um, he's also a relative newcomer to the political scene. So all we know about Tom Steyer is that he was a hedge fund manager for a long time and then he got into the whole climate change stuff and then impeachment. But like we don't have a very interesting, we have in fact zero legislative record of what Tom Sayers ever done because he's not a politician, he hasn't been involved, he worked in business for a long time. You contrast that with someone like Bernie Sanders, he's been around for decades and we know exactly what he's fought for, what he's gotten done in Burlington, in Congress, in the Senate, as a presidential candidate. We know those things, we can assess them, we don't have any of that information for Tom Steyer. We're just supposed to trust him that what he believes he fights is fighting for now, like that has come out of nowhere, that he's going to follow through on that and they'd be able to get something done. We have no idea if that's possible. Um, let's see. 
Another thing is, is it is the case that I'm a Bernie bro and, you know, I get irritated at potential people that are taking away from Bernie, but that's a real concern. I mean, if you're someone like Tom Steyer, like contrast that with Michael Bloomberg, like Michael Bloomberg, you know, he gives occasional lift service to progressive stuff like climate change, but, you know, on the rest of it, he's not really a progressive, he's a centrist, he doesn't want things to fundamentally change, etc., you know, Tom Starr apparently does really care about these progressive causes. Them, okay, but he has zero chance of actually winning the nomination. Like right now, he's spending a ton of resources in the early states, and he's got four percent in South Carolina. Like, what is going to happen in the next you know month and a half or whatever that all of a sudden makes him win these early states? And if he doesn't win the early states, he's even farther behind nationally. Like, what is his plan to win the nomination? There is no plan there. Like, it's just not going to happen. Okay, so if he does really care about those progressive causes, why is he pulling four valuable percentage points away from Bernie or Warren? Like, he could have endorsed those people, and then he could have developed campaigns in South Carolina to promote Medicare for All, or climate change, or whatever. And he could have hired all those people, he could have built that whole infrastructure, and he could have been pursuing all those causes while not taking away from progressives that actually have a real shot of winning. So what he's doing is making it less likely that a real progressive is going to get elected. That's what he's doing. And the people that say, well, he's putting money into the community, he's, by, you know, he's, he's employing activists and political uh, people that are progressive and giving them training and experiences, blah, 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 blah. Well, he could do all of that that's not a presidential campaign. <laughs> like, there's a great example in uh, Stacey Abrams, who ran for governor in Georgia. Like, she narrowly lost the election, and her issue that she highlighted during the whole election was voter suppression. And after, since the campaign, what did she do? Well, she started up a group that was all about voter suppression and, and talking about those issues and basically trying to, you know, push that, that issue and get people uh, involved and, and uh, employed and, and trying to make that real change. Well, okay, well, Tom Steyer could do that in South Carolina. He could be, it could be Tom Steyer's voter suppression campaign. And you could employ all those people and you could have them all going out and talking to people about the issue and trying to get changes to the local uh, political system in South Carolina, etc. Okay, you could, you could do all the stuff that's good and then like about the campaign without all of the bad stuff. He could do all of that. Now, why doesn't he do that? Because he's, I guess he's like, what, in his mid-60s or something like that? I'm assuming it's like, rather than buying a car or buying a jet or doing something like whatever, is that it's a vanity campaign. He gets to put his face in lights or his name in lights or whatever the right terminology is. He gets to see Tom 2020 billboards and signs all over South Carolina and get this idea that he's really doing something that's, of course, all about him and his personality and what he's doing that he's selling, right? He's the... He's a businessman. I'm going to show that Trump is a phony and a fraud, and I'm going to do this. Okay, well, that, that's great for Tom Steyer, but it does nothing for everyone else. And so for someone who cares so much about environmental activism, there's going to be a bunch of Tom Steyer, uh, you know, signs that are going to be tossed in the trash at the end of this election. That's great. All pointless. Except they're not just pointless. They take away from the progressive candidates that actually have a real shot at winning. In states that are critical, which are the early states, because the progressive candidates unlike someone like Biden or Buttigieg, who can keep going back to the millionaire well, they're getting grassroots donations, and they really do need to do well in these early states in order to build up their momentum to compete nationally. And so it's important that Bernie win South Carolina, Iowa, New Hampshire, etc., or do as well as he possibly can. So it really does impact it negatively, and it annoys me <laughs> that there are progressive people that seem to think it's fine that Tom Steyer is around because he talks about things that they care about. No, I don't, it's not okay. Like, he's hurting the candidates, he's wasting money and time on something that's not going to actually accomplish anything, that he could have been spending time on something that would accomplish something like water quality in Denmark, voter suppression, climate change, Medicare for all, all that sort of stuff. He could actually be contributing to positively, but he's not. He's choosing not to because he'd rather run for president. Uh, you know, it's tough because there are people that I know that are working on the campaign. And these are people that probably would not otherwise be employed by a presidential campaign right now. So people that want to be employed by a presidential campaign that are now giving an opportunity. And there are a lot of good people that are doing, you know, otherwise good work. So to them, what do I say, right? Like, oh, should you support, you know, Tom Steyer? Should you not? You know, it's hard for me to tell somebody to not take that opportunity that's available to them. But let's not be fooling anyone, you know, about what's really going on. 
and Tom Steyer, you should just drop out. You should drop out, endorse Bernie, change your campaign to a Medicare for All campaign or voter suppression campaign or criminal justice reform campaign or uh, you know, environmental uh, reform and, uh, you know, like all of those issues. Change, change those right now to, to be all of that. And then endorse Bernie and then push as possible and try to get all of your staff and your people to also go for Bernie because if you really care about those progressive issues, which Tom Sarah claims to care about, which also, by the, way, by the way, he misleadingly says he's the only candidate that's going to be straight with the American people and talk about climate change and make it a number one priority, except that everyone knows Bernie Sanders' climate plan is ranked the highest, the best possible climate plan. And unless you get elected, you're not going to be able to do that climate change stuff. So if he really cares about climate change the way that he says, he should be supporting Bernie, but yet he's not. So sorry for the digression. At any rate, drop out, endorse Bernie, switch over all your campaigns to actually useful things and not just a complete waste of time. And I really would like to stop seeing those billboards all around Columbia.